Yeah, how does my face look? Do I look good? Because I've, I've spent a lot of time in the lighting today. Yeah, it looks uh, facey. Looks very facey. That's the yeah, look yeah. I was going for. That's a facey face. You know, as opposed to, uh, do you remember that that they named that the boat? Well, they tried to name the boat, Boaty McBoat Face. Mm -hmm. did a, um... <laughs> this is what happens when you ask the public. To... If you ask the internet, that's what you get. You ask the internet, yeah, there's like naming a warship or something. Like the Queen's new warship will be named. Let's go to Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Booty Mc... What? Who are these idiots? Who do I rule? <laughs> I would have made a great queen. That's all I'm saying. I would have been perfect in the role. Talking of queen, I was singing before you came on. You were. And uh, yeah, and I was just thinking to myself what the best, uh, the best song ever was. And the queen came up, but I have to say um, it was eclipsed by uh, ABBA and uh, the Bee Gees. Right. No one can argue with that. It is about to rain, in fact. What? What? Normally, when, when someone sings badly, it rains. Is that what? Is that an Italian thing? Yeah. Oh, awesome. No <laughs> rain here, only snow. We have a we have a cold snap, and as soon as I started complaining, uh, my old coffee shop manager, Biliana, sent me a sent me a video of uh, what it's like outside her front door. Let me show you that for everybody listening <laughs> to that. <laughs> Let me show you the video, Max. Yeah, there is snow. There's basically, I think it's, she said it's minus 18. Oh, that is fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fresh. Chilly. That's fresh. That's what my, uh, that's the word my mum used when we, when we had no, no money for heating. She said, it's fresh. It's good for you. It's very fresh. It's like, but can't we just, can't we repair the roof so I don't have a hole? <laughs> Detail. We used to have a hole in the roof. I used to have several holes in the roof. We had a buckets all over my, um, we grew up on a farm. We had buckets to catch the water. So rather than repair the roof, because uh, she put the money into the horses instead, uh, we yeah. we had buckets. And when you woke up in the middle of the night to have a pee, you'd end up invariably knocking over a bucket of water if you knew put in one. And so, not not the day after. Has anyone has anyone noticed the pattern yet? Where I come on and I complain about my mum and my and my poor lifestyle when I grew up. Is that, yeah, yeah. You you, you always try to blame it on someone else. <laughs> hey, today we're going to be talking about ECM again. I can put this one. <laughs> The eagle-eyed amongst those all in the audience may have noticed we didn't do a podcast last week, except we did. Yeah, but uh, technology is not our friend. Well, basically, look, I'm going to totally, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the take the bullet on this one because actually it was my fault. What it was, I was emailed by the people we used to use um, uh, Zencaster, which I really like. I like Zencaster. Mm -hmm. I like them a lot because they don't charge me. I, I managed to always stay on their free plan under a number of hours or something a month. And for their audio stuff, it was great. The audio, we used it for months, really great quality. But it was only when we moved to video, we said, oh, they don't, do, they don't have a video option. So, you know, we'll, we'll pay for this damn mm -hmm. Zoom thing. And, uh, and then they came, they sent me an email saying, great news, it's really exciting. We're launching our video. Amazing. Thought, Fantastic. This is amazing. We're going to use that without testing it. <laughs> and it was like, I would say something, and then three seconds later, Max would hear it, and he would reply, but I was already saying the next thing. And then at the end of it all, I was thinking to myself, how the hell am I going to edit this so that it doesn't look terrible? But it saved me by failing and not uploading the thing anyway. So, <laughs> so there's, there's no idea. No, no idea needed. <laughs> I was so grateful when it failed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my God, that's going to be so much work. Oh, it, didn't, it didn't work. Oh, this is oh. going to be terrible. I'm going to spend like all night editing this thing to try and make some sense out of yeah. it. Oh, thank God it didn't work. <laughs> I can oh, tell it didn't Max. work. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we got some. We got no excuses this week to uh, to to not have a punchy, uh, fact filled, fun episode of talking about ECM, mm -hmm. which, as uh, those people who know me know, is one of my one of my favorite sort of lustful machines, the machines I lust after. And the question is, having done all the reviews and looking into it in detail, as opposed to just looking at the shiny outside, do we still like it? I say we because you never did because you didn't like shiny chrome machines. But you know, do those of us with taste? still like it and that's the question we're going to answer today perhaps yeah. and the, the answer is no <laughs> no the, that's, that's not the answer and damn you and no <laughs> and that's a wrap 
<laughs> I need <Head> over. <laughs> no, that's not the answer. Uh, don't listen to Max. Um, although, although I wouldn't say some of the shine has come off of it because I can't find what I really want is everything at a discount. And uh, mm. because I don't, because I don't really, I'm not really into steaming milk. Uh, I'm, I'm into the, I'm super into espressos. What mm -hmm. I really want is a single boiler with all the bells and whistles, but they only put the bells and whistles at the top end of the machine. So I end up having to basically always look at the top end machines. Mm -hmm. So actually what I'm trying to find is a line of machines that makes really good quality. And I don't think you can argue that ECM actually machines good quality. Um, and if you do, I'll mute you. Uh, so they, <laughs> they have good quality equipment, but absolutely. But what I'm really looking for is sort of something. I don't mind paying a little bit more. Obviously, I'm, I'm going to have to pay more than my Gadget Classic Pro to get all this stuff. But or keep I, the Gadget. I do. But I want something sort of in the middle. I, I feel it would be only fair. It would only be fair if I found something in the middle. So like I don't have to go to the most expensive in their line of machines mm -hmm. just to get something that makes a really great espresso with all the bells and whistles for espresso. Yeah. And, and that's what we're looking for. The only thing I think is that um... The fact that you do, that you're not interested in uh, in steaming milk, that actually throws everything off. Because, but can I can I tell you something? I guarantee you, and mm -hmm. this is an ironclad guarantee. You can take to the bank, Max. Mm -hmm. I'd actually like to see you take it to the bank. Let me know how you get on. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna do it with your money, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's nothing to the bank. Nick said uh, to come to the bank and to take this comment to the bank, uh, right. Mr. Manager. And um, take it to the bank, Max, that I, if, as soon as I get this perfect machine and we identify the perfect machine for me and I'm over the moon delighted and excited because I've got the ultimate espresso machine, I don't need to steam milk on, that I'll then go into a phase of wanting to steam milk. Oh, yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. It's the same thing that normally when I, when, whenever I buy something, uh, it, it, the, the, the price of, of it drops. Typically, it happens with cards. I buy a car and something terrible happens to the to the factory or um, they make a new model mm -hmm. just the, the day after I buy it so that uh, as soon as I buy it whatever I I have uh, the price drops it's now obsolete and the price has dropped yes. could you let me know what you're planning to buy over the next year plan my <laughs> buying decisions to be just after yours yes i think i should actually do do these kind of things you uh, could possibly set up a little business doing that yeah i think so yeah uh, I mean, so, I bought uh, I bought a, a VW just before the the big the big Volkswagen scandal. Really? Before yeah. the debacle. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. All right. That's my well, CV here. <laughs> well, uh, you should set up a website and monetize your 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 failures. Um, that's that's the way to make that's the way to make lemonade out of lemon, Max. Mm. <laughs> uh, monetize your failures. I'm monetizing <laughs> my failures. Laugh at me, so you know. Um, make, learn from my mistakes, and I'll make money whilst you do it. I'll come up with a good tagline. Anyway, ECM. Anywho. So they've got a line of machines that start, and you know we're going to start with a Casa Five. Yes, I'm actually uh, going to no to Sorry. put it on the. Are you going to put a little thing up? Well, I can't share my screen, so I'm not going well, to. I, I, you can share your screen. You just have to ask me nicely. Would you like to share your screen, Max? <laughs> uh, let me just do that. Multiple that. Org, multiple participants can share. No, I don't want that. One participant can share. Okay, advanced. Who can share? Only the host. And one participant. All participants. Okay, there you go. You see? There. Hey. So, you have your... Um... We're on the website, by the way. So, Max has just, he's just flung up his website, or the ECM website. Yes. So, these are all of the coffee machines that they make. And uh, as we, we did last time, I think we, we should start from, from, from the bottom yeah, and, and work our way up. So we've got, uh, we've got three, but it's, six. Okay, but I could, I could have a spoiler any time because I actually know which one you're going to say. And I'm going to throw you off because I'm going to say exactly the opposite of what I said the last time. Oh, damn you! Because ah. I was about to, I had come to a point where I was going to agree with what you said last time. I know, but th th then I'm going to disagree with myself. Okay, but so we hold on a second. Just for the listen, we've got three, six. Scroll down a bit more. There's at least there's, there's, there's a couple more. Keep yeah. going. That's six. We're still at six. Yeah, okay, I mean, nine. from here on, from the. Oh, uh, okay. Two. No, we got eight. We got we got seven. Sorry, seven. Yeah. Then there's the commercials. 
Okay, yeah, so the single group. I mean, there's no seven. point in, in going for the for the dual. No. Thingy my Bob. No. no. So we have the first one is a uh, Casa Five, which is uh, pretty much a glorified version of a uh, Gaja Classic. Similar quite expensive version of the Gaja. Very Classic. expensive. Mm. It's like a Ranchilla Silvia. So. Mm. Uh, it's got a few, a few, you know, a few bells and whistles. It's got um, a very nice looking um, steam wand. Uh, in general, it looks, it looks, it looks very simple. It's got a single boiler, vibration pump. Uh, it doesn't have a PID, but one thing that uh, it does have, and all of these machines have, it's got a variable pressure, so you can actually change the pressure. Yeah, While... the OPV valve is yes. uh, is available, and you just pull off the lid on all of these. They're all in the same place, if I understand it correctly. Uh, no, actually, in some of them, you have a knob on the side. On on. Oh, is that right? Silly thing. Uh, yeah, on on this side, I think, and you can change that. But it's uh, I'm going by memory. Anyway, uh, yeah. you have a nice um, pressure gauge, which is something that you can easily add. To a, to a Gaja Classic is a very small modification. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much it, really. It's got single boiler, so it's got the same solution. It's probably going to be different inside. I've never seen one of these open, so I don't know how they look inside. They look very nice. They're very tidy machines inside. Okay. Um, I, like the, I like the gauge because it actually makes a lot of sense. If you're going to have an OPV adjustment, yeah. then you can actually see what pressure you're putting. Um, yeah. Yes and no. Uh, I mean, you can adjust it with, uh, with a, of course, with the blind filter, but then uh, the OPV here is going to just tell you what, what, what your pressure, what your maximum pressure is. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to extract always at uh, nine bar. You might extract at eight because your coffee is uh, coarser. Uh, oh, but that's I, the I point. Just... That's where you can see the part. You can see the gauge. Yeah. So you'll see. I, right? As soon as I said it, I, I, heard, I heard it coming out. And yeah. Just... Yeah. Yeah. I picked up on that. Just I thought I'd just <laughs> raise that to everyone's attention. So um, yeah. So it's it's a look. It looks like it's the same kind of form factor as the uh, as the Gaggia Classic. Yeah, um, I would say Arancilia Silvia. It looks a little yeah, bit like right. the old uh, what is it? Gaggia Cubica, I think. I Which did look should... really good. Yeah. Uh, Saeco. Uh, Saeco, oh, Psycho, yeah, Psycho. Giancrema, that's uh, also another one that looks similar. This is metal, obviously, so it's you know a little more premium. Uh, it's got, funny enough, this one has uh, the the cup warmer, yep. which is the most useless thing you can put in these machines because yep. they do not heat the cups, and especially if it's uh, if it's built to European standards, it will not heat the, the cups. It'll just it switch, it'll switch off in ten, but as soon as your cups start getting warm, it'll switch off anyway. So it is absolutely useless. Yeah, I agree. Um, and it's got a vibration pump. So it's literally, you're getting a fancy Gaja Classic. So just, this is do, do, not do, really... Talk for one second, though, about the, the group head. The group head is the same kind of um, saturated group head as you get in a, in a, in a, in a Gaja. It looks the same. I think or is so. It a I mean, design? if it's a single boiler, there's only one way of, sort, uh, of delivering the hot water to the... Right. And can I just say also that the knob, I mean, I'm a big, you know, I'm a big knob observer. And um, <laughs> that, uh, that knob uh, is a low grade, it looks like a low grade option compared to everything else in the machine. Yeah. yeah. It's just sort of a very, a shiny black plastic knob. For the love of God, why did you get, everything else is to premium quality, nice metal, you know, yeah. nice equipment, looks really great. And then a shiny hard plastic knob. <clears throat> this is the steam wand. Yeah, but the boiler is in brass. That's one good thing. So it's oh. more, it's closer to a Rancilia Silvia than to a Gaja Classic. Okay. Well, there's certainly the price range is closer as well. Uh, yeah. I think it, I think this one goes at around is it 800 pounds something like that. Whoa! Wow. Seven or 800 pounds? Yeah, yeah. It's more expensive. Let me just check that out. Uh, let me check that. I can't check it out. How do I check that out? Oh, if, uh, Hold on. Here we go. You have to press escape. I have to. Yeah, I know you have to press this. It is. Uh, oh, I've, I've zoomed past it. Casa 5. Yeah, it's 800 pounds. 800 pounds from 816 pounds from, wow. uh, from somewhere. 
you can actually get a, a, a Nuova Simonelli Oscar too for less than that. I mean, it's just, it is, it That's is, it's, um, I, I don't know how many they sell. I don't want to put it down because I'm sure they put a lot of hard work and effort into it and all the rest of it, but I can't imagine they sell a lot of that machine. No, or if they do I sell don't. a lot, it's because people don't know that there's other ones out there, um, which maybe offer better value. So I wouldn't touch this. I have to yeah, say. No, I price. wouldn't, I wouldn't touch that with a badge pole, to be honest. Yeah. And then there is uh, this uh, classic IPID, which is a massive letdown. Can I say, can, before you go, because I'm going to let you talk, but I just wanted to say that when I first saw this, I mm -hmm. wondered whether this could be the Holy Grail for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and then I looked into it. Yes, go on. Yeah. So this is uh, very exciting when you look at it. Because you look at it and it's, oh, wow, my God, it's perfect. So you have an E61 group head or an E61-like group head. Oh. <laughs> and then you have a single boiler uh, machine. You have a, a PID mm -hmm. that changes the, the temperature of the, of the whole thing. And... Uh, it's the, the thing is single boiler that th threw me off. So instead of having a heat exchanger through a, a pressurized boiler, you have a heat exchanger in the group head that delivers warmer water at the temperature that you set your PID at mm -hmm. into the thermosiphon of the group head. So you have lost loss of uh, energy in there so mm -hmm. your group is going to be colder i think personally mm -hmm. than your boiler and your boiler is thermosiphoning the water into it and then you can extract the coffee from the same water okay. either that or you have a, a boiler that uh, delivers the water into the group head and the group head is heated by black magic or something i don't know could be black magic max you might be right on that uh, <laughs> but either way it's a very silly thing and uh, you have a steamer that you need to pressurize that's yeah that was so one of the killers boiler. for me i started to look at all of the um the training videos on how to maintain these machines there's a number of training videos on mm -hmm. the maintenance of them and they all said, now, don't forget, after you've steamed, you need to, and then they went into some elaborate, like I tried to take notes. <laughs> you know, I was <laughs> literally trying to take notes. You can't just steam milk and then, you know, turn it off. Like, oh, no, God, no, no, you have to. Very important or else the machine will explode. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a good thing. And I can't even remember. I, I mean, people are saying, okay, well, Nick, what, what, what is it you have to do? That's the point. I, I, I can't remember. And that's exactly the point. It was, it was a... There was a routine. I'm not saying it's rocket science. I'm, I'm saying I'm sure you could learn it, mm -hmm. but I don't want to have to learn some important routine. Well, you know, you don't have to learn it if you never use the steamer. If if you um, that's if kind you of seldom true. use the steamer, but it's yeah, the concept but... of the E61 group head. When you don't have when you don't have um, a hot enough boiler, that bugs me. Yeah. I tell you, a couple of things bugged me on it as I looked at it. One are the switches. Don't ask me what. Well, you do, you do ask me. When you take a look at the way the whole thing works, mm -hmm. um, it's not as simple as it might look. So it's quite a simple design, but there's a lot of now switch this up, turn that knob, switch it off after five seconds, turn the knob back. It's like, what? Uh, so the, the thermal stability. Mm -hmm. It's definitely one thing in there. Uh, if I'm going to use an E61 group head, I want to have, I want to have, I want to know that the company has done a lot of work to achieve mm -hmm. thermal stability somehow in it. And I don't think yeah. that work is, has happened on this particular machine. No. Also, I think it's just the looks. It is the looks. And, and also the, the steam wand, you're right. I would never use it, but it's knowing it's there knowing that the, the one time I would want to use it. In fact, that makes it worse. So I was using it every day. I would remember. The fact of the matter is I'd go down and I'd go, you know what? I'm going to make a, hot, a cup of hot cocoa. Oh, wait a minute. I can't remember how to use the steam wand. Mm -hmm. There's something very important to stop it from blowing up that I need to do this routine. Let me just find that on the internet. I just drive me nuts. Yeah. It's, so 
next <laughs> not this yeah. Oh, yeah. by the way what was it costing it was costing uh, about 1100 pounds exactly so you have a very expensive machine you have a very expensive and, uh, doorstop. I, yeah. I am honestly struggling to understand how you heat up the the e61 group head without having the water in the so without having the, the water in the thermosiphon at significantly higher temperature than yeah than the group head is supposed to be because normally what you do is you have your group head that sits at around 94 degrees 94 95 degrees and uh, in the heat exchange you heat it up by uh, thermosiphoning so you have a boiler that is pressurized at 1.2 1.1 1. between 1.1 and 1.4 bar so you're looking at between at the temperatures between 125 and 135 degrees mm -hmm. and that's the temperature in the boiler your water gets heated up, moves moves up mm -hmm. into the group head. It cools down in a little bit in the in the in the in the way, mm -hmm. and then heats up the group head, cools down, and then the, the cold water is uh, uh, goes down and then goes back into the uh, the thermosiphon uh, cycle. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works, and you always lose energy because you're dissipating heat into the room. And into the group head. Mm -hmm. If you have your uh, your uh, group head that you want to have it sitting at ninety four degrees, and your boiler is not at a hundred and something, it's a ninety four degrees as well. Mm. Either you keep it heat, you keep heating it up and circulating the water like mad all the time actively, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or you're going to have to accept that the group head is going to be colder than the boiler. It is always colder than the boiler. Mm -hmm. It will never equilibrate at the same temperature. Mm. That's that's the key thing. So I am struggling to understand how they they did this, and I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm wrong. In assuming... Yeah, maybe it's perfect, right? Maybe it's, it's spot on. Yeah. So I need, we need to look up to see if someone's stuck. You can get these little stickers. You put on the group head, which show mm -hmm. the temperature. And uh, a lot of people are using those now in videos and when they're reviewing machines, they put the stickers on them and then you can see. Yeah, or you can put here, you can put a thermometer, actually, a group head thermometer. Yeah. I would I do just, that. Well, you but do I'm that because you have one, but you know, I no. think you can buy a sticker. Um, so, <laughs> so, okay, next, that's yeah. out the door. So that's 1100. So now we're moving up the value chain from 1100. Yes. We're going, we're spending more. Yes, and that has a vibration pump still. Still vibration pump, yeah. And in yeah. these machines, they tend to be really, really loud. <laughs> uh, no, that's not fair. The the ECMs they put a lot of uh, a lot of sound control okay. that, in them, a lot of rubberized stuff, and yeah, they put a lot of effort into making the sound. I know okay. that it is always louder, but the yeah. these the ECM machines are actually pretty quiet for okay. vibration pumps. Okay, because uh, I I've uh, I've repaired a few uh, of these. Chrome once and uh, whenever not from ECM though, right? Not from ECM. not from ECM, no, yeah. not from ECM. Whenever you turn the pump on, everything resonates in the, in, yeah. in the steel, and That's it makes right. a, a, a right racket. Yeah, they they generally are very noisy, but the ECM ones are actually not not as bad as others. So mm. now with the next one up, we're going to lie. So now we're just adding more and more zeros onto the checkbook that we've got yes. to you know, write our checkbook. So we're going up to the Mechanica Five mm -hmm. Slim. So now, in this one. Yeah, it's called slim because why, Max? Uh, because it's narrower. Yeah. <laughs> so it sits it sits nicely nicely uh, in a in a normal kitchen. I think it's kind of deep though, isn't it? Isn't it kind of deep? And I yeah, don't mean sorry, I don't mean like philosophically. <laughs> no, but it's not. You can't have a conversation with it, or you can. You, you can, can and uh, it's fine if if you have a monologue with it. At, at the very moment when the coffee machine responds to you, that's when you should seek help. That's when you stop drinking espresso. That's yes. when you've had too many espressos and you need Yes, to and you should really stop putting grappa in it. <laughs> yeah, whiskey and espresso. So, uh, so what do you reckon? So this is a heat exchanger system with a vibration pump. So we've still got the vibration pump. Yes. It's still shiny. It's, mm -hmm. not as it's not as wide, so it takes a bit, it, it, you've got to have enough depth to your counter space. Uh, to, to, to get it in, just kind of they just made it that way. Yeah. Um, it looks it looks quite nice, 
Um, I'm just going to talk about the looks and, and, and the aesthetics for a second, and then you can actually talk about the serious and intelligent stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so from a looks point of view, it's, um, you're, getting a, you're getting away from, when we, on the last one, we looked at the classic PID, it had, uh, it had switches. So this doesn't have any switches. It's got just simply, it's got a very, it's more elegant with a simple green or red lamp at the bottom left. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and it's got uh, two, two gauges and uh, two twiddly knobs. Uh, mm-hmm. along with your lever and an E61 group. Now, the lever is for actuating the, uh, or starting the, um, the extraction. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to ask you a question about that in a second, but because yep. uh, I know you love that feature, which I do. Yeah, well. it's my favorite. <laughs> but, I hate it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but aesthetically wise, I find it more pleasing than the Classica, uh, just because mm-hmm. it's got cleaner lines. Um, but it is How a heat is exchanging it? machine. How so is me. it different from the Classica? They look exactly the same to me. Uh, it doesn't have the switches. Right. And it's got, if you go back to the Classica, go back a second, what you'll see on the Classica is mm-hmm. it's got an asymmetrical look to it with the single, with a single knob. Right. And this one has got a more symmetrical look with a knob on each side and the uh, gauges on each side. So it's, a, it's the but with less... The, the lights are out of the way, the lights in the bottom left hand, which take them out of the way. The gauges are eye level at the top, which I like. Mm. The knobs are on each side. You've got a steam mm. wand and a water um, pipe, hose, whatever you want to call it, mm. on each side. And it's very symmetrical and clean. So I actually prefer the look of this. Okay. But to I me, wouldn't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it, actually, the, the, fa- the fact of being symmetrical, it means that you have the water, the water tap, the hot water tap, boiling hot water tap uh-huh. on the right hand side which is very close to the to the lever that you actually use to to turn on the co- the, yeah. the coffee on and off fantastic because that means you're living risky it means every day when you make an espresso there's the excitement of will i get third degree burns or what i don't know do i want that in the do morning I, <laughs> do I wake up in the morning I your eyes are half is, closed but, you yeah. know, leave and you're like yeah not again yeah, because I don't know you guys, but uh, in the morning, I'm not exactly the smartest thing in the house. And I have, you know, I hadn't thought of that. They must have thought of I that. I have a toaster. Surely that doesn't happen. And sometimes it outwits me in the morning. I see, yeah, you have a battle of wits with your espresso machine. Yes. And it wins. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> and uh, in order to, to, to have these out of the way, you actually have to put it outside. And if it drips, it drips on the counter, which is annoying. Right, yeah. Yeah. But that's me. I'm just the me. It's only you that doesn't like to get burned, Max. The rest of us like yes. it, all right? I know, I know. Keep I know. that it's, to yourself. It's my, it's my own fault. burn-free lifestyle. <laughs> the, the lever itself, I actually do not like it because I prefer to have a, a valve, uh, a solenoid valve at the bottom here mm-hmm. that switches the, 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 the brewing from on to off. The, the fact that some people say that you can actually do pre-infusion with these is rubbish. Mm-hmm. I was about to say that. Yes, it, 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 you can't really do pre-infusion. The only thing that you would do here, you have a heat exchanger, so you have a slightly pressurized line in the in there because it's hot. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have uh, the water that is hot, so it expands and it will under a slight pressure. Mm-hmm. When you turn that, and you, so what you do when you turn it, you you switch the the water circulation between the group head thermosiphoning mm-hmm. and you, then you, you switch it to go towards the um, towards the shower screen and then making coffee ah. so there is a switch there there's a switch valve it's just a it's um it's an off-centered um like a rocker rocker yeah it's like a rocker switch pre- pretty much and uh, you change what happens and uh, in theory what they say is that uh, when you switch it you can open the brewing the brewing valve so that the water can flow through without engaging the pump. Now these are, these machines they all have um, tanks. They don't they, they don't have a water supply, so you don't have the pre infusion that you would get if you had uh, pressure from the line. From the mains, yeah. From the mains. So that is actually rubbish. It's not what, how it happens. The only thing that you would get is a little bit of a dribble of uh, the, the, the hot water that just going to fall out of it. Mm-hmm. And 
you're not pre-wetting your your pack you're not doing anything to it you're just adding a few a few drops to on the top mm. which are not going to penetrate they're not going to pre-wet it they're not go- they're not doing anything to it mm-hmm. so it's just a look it's the mm-hmm. same thing of the of the la marzocco same thing like the linear thing. mini yeah yes. everybody's fooled by that they think that paddle has some kind of analog control to it but it doesn't it just there's exactly. A, there's a, a connection of levers which just pushes the button. I think there's actually a little finger at the end of it, and when you when you pull the lever across, the finger just pushes the button. Yeah, yeah. that's how it works. This does the same, roughly. I mean, it is an analog valve. That is true. So you don't have to maintain the the, the three-way solenoid. Right. It looks a little nicer, sort of. I don't particularly. I'm not bothered by it, but. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually prefer the solenoid valve because it's more exact when mm-hmm. it starts and stops. This is a little more wobbly. This is a, a more um, um, analog valve. This is, for me, that what I like about this is it, it feels more artistic. And uh, you're a scientist that likes to do things right. Whereas yeah, I like to, I'm, you know, I like to, I like to things, do things, like things precisely. To be precise and, and yeah. measured. Whereas I like to feel like I've got, I've got a creative uh, I've got a creative influence on how my espresso is going to taste. Yes, and if it tastes so... really good. I say, well, I must have just moved that lever perfectly. <laughs> okay. But uh, now that I know the facts, I can't hide. I can I can no longer hide uh, from the truth, and um, and that's so uh, you've ruined that for me. Thanks, man. That's good. I am glad. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't have bought this machine anyway because I don't like the knobs, you know. So yeah, uh, so this one has, uh, yeah, it has the knobs, which is a needle valves that, uh, that you open and close with knobs. Everyone the good does thing these. Is that, Everyone uh, has the knobs, by the way. Like when we say knobs, what we're talking about, we're talking about those little round knobs that you twiddle to one side or to the other. So you know, you've, everyone's seen them, right? So you want to go do, do some steaming, you put yeah. your milk jug in, and then you you twiddle your knob. You know, desperately as far as you can, or whatever. Unless you've tried to get some fidelity, you get a little bit of slow steam to begin with. But no one really does that because, well, you have a, just... about uh, a quarter of a turn of uh, of play if you really yeah. if you're really careful. Yeah, and then Less. you and then you have to twiddle it furiously back when you're you know when you're. I don't like this. I just like a lever. Give me mm-hmm. a lever. That makes sense, and that goes under lever technology here. Yeah. There way. you go. Lever lever valve technology. <laughs> Um, yeah. what you have is, is a, a very tight machine, actually. It's quite, quite nice. Uh, yeah. The good thing for me in these is that you have a heat exchanger. So you have a thermosiphon. You're a heating mm-hmm. up brew head with a thermosiphon, which is good. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a heat exchanger. So you have actually shot-to-shot stability. You have thermal mass in the boiler so that you can, you can tap on it and you, you know that you're going to have the same temperature. The only issue is that these is probably regulated by pressure. So there's a pressure stat. So pressure if you want to change there, yeah. it, it's a bit difficult. And they wear, they do wear out pressure stats, don't they? Every few years? Is it every few ah, years? I don't know, really. I, I don't think so. I mean, to be honest, if you maintain your machine decently, it's not... Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait not... a minute. How do you maintain a pressure stat? You don't maintain a pressure stat. You you avoid you avoid having a massive amount of lime scale building up in there. Oh, okay, yeah, true, true. Um, and if mean, this machine costs about thirteen hundred pounds. By the exactly. way, when we say pounds, my friends in America just say, actually, no, I can't say dollars anymore because the dollars plummeted. Ooh. So, oh yeah, yeah. So I don't know what it is in America, to be honest. With anyway, you, it's, but it's probably thirteen hundred. A thud. <laughs> It's in a way, it's, it's about the, every machine we go up is about another 200, you know, whatever currency you're in up. Yeah. So um, the last one was 1100. It went 800 pounds for the, the Castle 5 mm-hmm. to 1100, which is a 300 um, a jump to the Classica PID. Mm-hmm. And then it's 1300, <clears throat> another 200 for the Mechanica 5 Slim. And yeah. we we still got a situation where we've got no real control of the over the flow control and yeah. um, the lever is a bit of a fake. Well, so flow control you can actually install it in these, but it's another two hundred and something. Oh pounds. yeah, that's right. So there's a mushroom at the top. When we say yeah. a mushroom, it's like this, it's just a giant bolt. Yeah, it's the E sixty one. So there is a very common E sixty one modification you can add that uh, allows you to um, to have a flow control. So you can actually do flow control with any A61 machine. 
What, what, sorry, stupid question, Max. Can I ask yeah. a stupid question? Mm -hmm. If you had flow control, could yeah. you not do your pre-infusion by just having... If you have flow, flow control, yes. So you could actually use this machine, put in a flow control thing. I think they're about 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. Put a flow control doohickey. I think that's the technical term if you look it up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> on the top of that where that mushroom is. Mm -hmm. And forget about yeah. doing the, the faux fake uh, lever pre-infusion. Just do the pre-infusion with the flow control. Precisely. So it wasn't a stupid question. No, no, it's not a stupid question. Ah. It's, uh, but it's another 200 pounds on top of it. Yeah. And uh, it's a 200 pounds on a, a machine that, uh, I mean, to be honest, I think this is nice. Mm -hmm. I would go for this if I like this kind of style, which I don't. Mm. Uh, but it's, wait, wait, wait a minute. Can you still have the flow control when you've got a vibration pump? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you can. I'm thinking of the pre-infusion. You can do pre-infusion and flow control. The only thing is that the flow control that you get is completely analog. So it's a bit mm. uh, hit and miss, to be honest. I don't particularly like the There's idea of the pre-infusion like that. Mm. I think there so, should be more fidelity because, to be honest, you can do pre-infusion. You have your gauge here, so you can actually estimate what pressure you're, you're, you're at and then change the, the flow to yeah. the pressure. But I don't think you can do two shots exactly the same. I do not believe right. it one bit. That's, and that's what I'm really going for. And besides which, more important than all of that stuff that you just said, it's still got the knobs. So. And it's got the knobs. The knobs Next. are a big... <laughs> a big letdown. So that's a heat exchanger. So that's already in the right yeah. idea from my point of view. Yeah. And it wasn't from my point of view. Can I just say, just setting out my, putting out my, my store. No, 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 go back, go, go to the next one. Sorry. So we're going to jump to the next one, uh, mm -hmm. the Mechanica 4 Profi. Yes. Um, but as we do, let me add in here, let me color my, my um, not like my expectations, but my, my requirements a little bit. Mm -hmm. By prefacing, and I say prefacing in the middle of the podcast, by prefacing this podcast in the middle, uh, by, saying, <laughs> by saying that um, my problem with heat exchangers is twofold. One, the time it takes, um, well, actually, it's kind of more the E6 one group, but the time it takes to heat up, mm -hmm. and two, the temperature stability. So those are the two things that I'm trying to overcome. Um, and if I can find solutions to those, I've got no problem to the heat exchanger, but I, I you know, mm -hmm. so that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to solve. So yeah. we're now on the Mechanica 4 Profi, which I, I just, you know what, don't even talk about this, Max, it's got no PID. No, but this one has a rotary pump. So that's the only difference in this it's, case. Do you know what it is? I'll tell you what this one is. This, for anybody who's interested in marketing, mm -hmm. this is what you call something but i can't remember the name of it but if you call it something this is when you've put a fake is I, as far as i'm concerned this is a fake this is when you put a fake product in to make the next more expensive product look cheaper so what you do is you put a product in there where mm -hmm. you, people say oh yeah that looks really nice with a rotary pump oh but it doesn't have an x in it it's such and such oh look at the next model up if they were to simply go from the last model to the model above this it'd be a big price jump you just slot in something that nobody really wants so this, has the, the this has the, the levers, not it's the knobs. It's got levers, it's got, it's got a rotary pump, uh, but no PID. What's Doesn't have a PID. Do you know? And how much is it? Let me take a look. I don't know. No, I, didn't even, I didn't even write it down. Um, what does it say? So, go and, I'll go and look it up. Profi, Profi 4. Plus also it's got a silly name. I think they even gave it a silly name in order to make sure that no one <laughs> bought it. Uh, uh, the Profi 4 is fifth, uh, from Dopio, which is a, a quite a good place. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, uh, it is 1,650 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. Uh, in this one instead, which is the next one up, which is the Technica 5. Yeah. Uh, this one have, has a PID. So these would be the, I think, for, for your requirements, would be the, the minimum that meets all the all the um, needs that you all have. All the requirements, yeah. Yes. The PID in these machines, I think it's only 
to change the temperature of the brewing. It, it doesn't make them more accurate or more reliable shot to shot. Once, it's, uh, once the, the um, uh, heat exchanger is set mm -hmm. to reach a certain temperature, it will be always reaching the, set, the same temperature because of the physics of it. Right. So it doesn't change how it's planned in these. The only thing is that you can actually change it. So what they've done in here, you have uh, an equation. They, they've already calculated the equation um, that converts the temperature in the boiler Mm -hmm. to the temperature that you get in the brew head. And uh, they are very accurate on that. So when you buy these kind of things, they actually give you, in the book, they give you what uh, either what pressure and what temperature you get in the brew head or uh, what temperature you set for the brew head and that's the temperature that is set in the in the boiler. I think they've done some algorithms and I heard that it's yes. actually quite accurate. Yes, heard, they're very accurate. Um, which the got German. me very excited, which is why I started to actually veer towards, you know, taking your position la on last week's podcast that no one's ever going to hear. Uh, <laughs> that um, that uh, that I should be looking at this at this machine. Just to, just to make a case in point, I looked up the price of it, um, and it's seventeen hundred and something pounds. Jesus Christ. Uh, no, you just no, you don't need to give Jesus Christ in his payment. Um, you just <laughs> need seventeen hundred so pounds. Jesus Christ can still stay where he is. Uh, no need to trade in your Jesus Christ. Um, no. Just just the, the money. You can, can, you, can, you can try. Uh, if you have a Jesus Christ free, uh, please call me and let me know. Uh, I'm sure we can monetize that in more favorable ways. But he's got hold his, holes in his hands. I, so. oh, please don't. Oh, you, you, I was skirting on the edge of of acceptable <laughs> podcast limit and you just went right over the money you just blew through it yeah uh for all those people out there that are of faith uh, i i do not agree with max whatsoever in his statements um mm -hmm. this podcast i saw you agreeing <laughs> uh but but uh and it's a big but <laughs> okay <laughs> as uh, i had to say um that if you so that jump in price from mm -hmm. the 1300 which is the v slim to mm -hmm. the 1700 seems like a lot doesn't it but if you go to the one below the fake right. one the one that they don't they probably don't even make any of them because mm -hmm. they know they're not going to sell any well of it the, depends really it's it that that one there's 1500 so it goes up by 200 pounds suddenly you're thinking well only for 200 pounds more i get yes everything. but then yeah. when do you need the pid Every day, Max. Why? Because I, I use different coffees. I have ah, uh, dark do roast, that. then light roast, then medium roast. You do that. How many people actually tend to use the same over and over and over? I actually have no idea about that question. Uh, how many people are like me, Max? I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty special. Um, and <laughs> I know that special. because my mom told me. Uh, and I am very special. And uh, so, so there's that. So there. But... Also, I would say don't don't discount the um, the phenomena, the phenomenon mm -hmm. of uh, of of you know flashy toy gadget things. I mean, it's like when Absolutely. you go and buy a car. You know, you go out, you go to your dealership, and you have no intention of having the heated seats. Mm -hmm. But then the salesman says to you, "Well, for only an extra X hundred pounds, you can get the sports pack, which comes with things that you never considered, but you think." Ooh, Heads up display, heated seats, you know, a bit cushy, the armrest. <laughs> and then you're sold. And you think, well, I'm only gonna buy I don't want to buy this again. So you might be right, but you know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, anyway, so oh, I know they've I got their strategy, 200 pound slices, and each one has something that they purposefully didn't yeah. put in there. So to try to push you up because they know that PID only costs them an extra 10 pence or something. And I don't think so. I can't remember, whatever. Okay, it's a little bit more, right? But it's not two hundred pounds worth no, of money. No, it's not. So they're making an extra, which is fine because that's what they're in business to do. But mm -hmm. you know, no, I, um, how dare they make money? They should. What's well, your function? The, the the amount of people. I mean, if you're ever on their supplier side, funny enough, if you're if you're a customer, if you're a if you, all, all you ever do in life is is buy, or you mm -hmm. work for something, you get a salary. You don't understand this uh, concept. Why should you? But um, 
but you go things and you kind of always want stuff cheaper because that's why wouldn't you like that's what you think you know you go and buy a television you want it cheaper mm -hmm. you you subscribe to your internet whatever it is you know you try to argue to get it cheaper because that's our nature right the funny thing is is that there's also mentality that you you feel like you deserve cheaper a lot of the times and i know for a fact from being on a supplier side where i supply services and, and or you know i do stuff uh, on, on bar talks mm -hmm. and we, we 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 do stuff sometimes people have a, a you know that they thought they don't understand why you need to make money when i deal with my suppliers i always make sure that they are making money because then i know i'm going to get a good service from them i want them to make money i don't want them to make an excessive amount of money and laugh in my face but if they're not making yeah, exactly. money they're not making a, a profit a, then what's the there's a point between making money and being ripped off yeah, that's the point you got to get. So, I mean, I, I, have, I have nothing against them for, 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 for doing it. Absolutely. It's just a little frustrating that the one I want is always the most expensive one. Well, I think you, sh you would be okay with this already. I think this is, this is already something that yeah. uh, would be suitable because it does have the rotary pump. Yeah. It's got a heat exchanger, so you have your consistency shot sh to shot. Yeah. And you have a PID, so you can actually change the temperature of your extraction whenever yeah. you want yeah it's going to take time to you can't say oh i'm gonna i'm gonna extract the 94 mm, i'm gonna try 96 and you do it right away now you're gonna need to wait for it ah. to calibrate but you can change it easily the previous model to change it you have to open the machine and change the pressure start and then remeasure and you basically can't it's not, not, not for any, practical purposes right yeah, no it's not practical so i think these for what you like and what you want, this could be it. Okay. Shall I put an underline on it as a to go onto my list? I should. I think you should. Okay. I'm Instead, if it was me, yeah, I would prefer something like this. Why? Because you can actually you. you oh, lost. this is the electron. Okay. So what we're looking at. Sorry, I thought you jumped back to the old one, Ooh. but you haven't. You've jumped. This is interesting. So. So I jump forward. Yeah, you jump to the electronica, problem. the electronica. Yes, two protein. This one has what needs to happen, which is you lost the silly lever on the side, which is useless, as we agreed. Yeah, as I proved to you, it's absolutely yeah. useless eh. and pointless. I like it. I do not accept any anything else. It's pointless, silly, mm -hmm. and you have instead buttons that you can program. So uh, you can decide, I want to be artistic and make my coffee as, as it come. And you press this button here that just goes until you stop it. Or I want to make a ristretto, an espresso, a double ristretto, a double espresso. And you can decide how long the, each of them are going to pour for, which is a, a, a function that I think is brilliant if you, are con if you have everything else before upstream that is consistent and if you have the right grinder you know your beans and you know that you grind at the same uh, at the same level you have the same amount of coffee going in it's normal to have the same the same time so you have the same recipe over and over and over mm -hmm. it's a, a very relaxing way of doing it you just do your espresso press the button and then it's going to stop on itself is going to be to do it precisely so you want to extract in 30 seconds you will extract in 30 seconds the only thing that this one doesn't have is the um pid yeah. oh god yes. they did it to me again yes i mean you were starting to convince me i even started yes. to look it up it's about in america it's two thousand five hundred and something you need to negotiate dollars mm -hmm uh which sounds like oh it's probably gonna be something similar in the uk too expensive but it sucked my teeth a little bit and then uh and then i saw one second hand it's a used one uh-huh uh looks immaculate um for 1190 euros mm -hmm. um based probably in bosnia and herzegovina but um who knows uh i don't know where it's based but based somewhere it's in euros Actually, I'm saying it looks immaculate. It's not immaculate. It's got a few scratches on it, but it looks in good condition. Mm -hmm. um, a thousand euros. It actually sounded pretty good. And then you went, but there's no PID. And this doesn't have the PID. That's the only issue with that one. 
you can always stall it afterwards if you want to but it's a pain that you really you don't really want to add to a machine when you're spending that amount of money no so I don't it like ends up the being either. these the synchronica that's the which again really has this stupid thing again i love that it's got a beautiful lever on there you see that you see that right next to the uh, the burn one this, like this, this is this is stupid yeah i love stupid. it stupid i love that stupid thing stupid stupid, like stupid lever yeah we've got something it's in common there it's bad yeah silly and bad like me it's got something in common <laughs> and dangerous like me <laughs> and uh so these is instead a dual boiler mm -hmm. so these has a, a completely different system so you have the boiler for the for the milk and uh, a system that heats up the, yeah. the group head mm -hmm. pid yep. and then you have the the boiler for the water at the, that puts it at the right temperature that you want and goes yep. into the group head it's perfect except yes you need to get the mushroom replaced with a flow control and then you've got it all it's and got a the, the uh, rotary pump and the bloody lever got a rotary pump it's got the beautiful lever that max loves right next to the burning wand um, thing. And... <laughs> <laughs> and it's got the levers the lever knobby thing twiddly. the lever knobby thing that makes me feel like an artist as i as i move it up slowly thinking i just no it's a little bit too fast take it easy and it's actually doing nothing but that's yeah, uh, it does that's nothing to it nothing it's got a very satisfactory i, I it's got a very can i just say that wand Got a very satisfactory movement to it i don't understand it look you can either push a button which let's face it has no ergonomic kind of uh there's nothing to warrant it whatsoever pushing a button has nothing there's no dopamine inducing um in, in inducing activity by pushing a button whereas when you lift that lever up and it has like a really has just the right amount of resistance and there's a little click as it goes up uh-huh uh you, you just get that little dopamine rush that little that little thing that says to you you nick are a special person you are making a beautiful cup of coffee you're an artist you're controlling this thing when this thing comes out great it's all going to be because of you and the way you move that lever mm -hmm. i wonder why it's uh, going up and not down okay i i have i i, I just thought i said something beautiful i thought i was just talking poetry and then you just came out with something why does it go up and not down why is it so satisfying because it goes up oh i see uh because well, that's when the espresso happens man that's when the magic happens uh-huh i mean obviously you turn it down as well you turn it down faster because because then you just want to switch it off mm -hmm. in a precise way uh it's also satisfying but a different kind of satisfaction so it, it actually for each espresso you get two satisfactory movements <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to look at it uh but that could that synchronica is the it's the daddy right mm -hmm. it's the daddy it's the daddy of their of their consumer machines um it is a beautiful machine it is incredibly well built and put together you take a mm -hmm. look at the welds and see, i've actually like i you know i've looked i've examined this thing the welding is amazing the mm -hmm. way it all fits together it just click clunk click clunk perfectly. absolutely uh, it's got everything you need in it, and unfortunately, it's like two thousand three hundred quid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is extremely expensive, which is silly. Well, I mean, okay, look, uh, would I have that over a linear mini? Yes, I would. Um, but a linear, linear mini is, is more, more expensive. expensive. So you know, a me... linear mini is what three thousand. Uh, yeah, and, three, and three, and then some. three, and then some. So. Yeah, I mean it's cheap for what it is, but personally, I do not like the style. For yeah. me, the, the most beautiful coffee machine at the moment on the market for prosumer you, uh, use is the Victoria Arduino. Oh, the, the Victoria, the Victoria, the Eagle yeah, One, Prima. That that is amazing. It's a contemporary style. It would go, you know, it goes great. It's beautiful. And, it's uh, just just fantastic. Just, just make looks sure right. you don't make make sure you're not the one paying for it. That's <laughs> yeah exactly exactly somebody you know your rich friend or daddy or something says what do you want for christmas my dear you say i'd like a victoria arduino i don't know what that is but here's a blank check in that case get one why yeah, not absolutely but you have to earn the money maybe look somewhere else yeah or, or, or we or our sponsors could could give us one Ooh, I don't that would be amazing like, i don't think they like us no i don't know i've spoken <laughs> to them i just imagine they don't like us uh, no, I see. Like 
They and, shouldn't uh, like this. I think it. I've said good things about their machines. I, I'm trying to think back. Maybe what I need to do is go back over all the podcasts and erase where I say anything negative. Mm -hmm. and uh, and only say positive things about these machines so that the manufacturers think, you know, this guy would be a good stooge. I'll send him one. The Victoria Arduino. Yeah, I, 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 I it. love a Victoria Arduino. I think they're amazing. I think the company's great, and the CEO's a very good-looking gentleman. I'm assuming he's a gentleman. I actually don't know, but assuming <laughs> he is. Very good-looking. Um, and their machines are amazing. Probably the best thing that's ever been made and invented ever in the world. So send me one, <laughs> please. Uh, but I'm not biased at all. No, 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 no. I would be biased if you send me one. Um, definitely. I would love to be biased. We'd love to be biased over here in this channel. So do send us, uh, do send us a machine. We don't care what it is, um, <laughs> but send us something. I got sent coffee. I've been sent coffee for free, and Ooh. and and um, actually, got, I got a couple of coffees for free. I got one from uh, from Gerald, lovely Gerald. Ooh. Uh, this is a while back. This is a while back, but I bought some more from him. Um, you know, I, I bought the, uh, the Burundi. He sent me the Burundi. Okay. Uh, I think he sent both of us the Burundi. Actually, he sent them both to me, and I sent one to you. Yes. Uh, then I went and I bought another half kilo of it um, because I actually really, genuinely really liked it. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's from, from Peabury. Um, I think I said last week's, I'm, I'm going to go and buy some, some coffee from Carvetti. Okay. And I didn't. So he just thinks I'm a liar. <laughs> I think, I think I've got around better, to it. I've been busy. I've been busy. Uh, I think he's got so, a better thing to do than, than worry about us. He probably, yeah, he probably, he, actually, yeah, you're right. He doesn't think about <laughs> it at all. Um, so, but I'm going to buy some coffee from him. Uh, this, mm. I, I really am this week. I bought some coffee from this other place called Roaring Gill. Yes. And Roaring Gill, interestingly, I got sent three capsules. Not by mm. them, but by the people that I think either roast it or package it or something. God, I hate it. Um, because they sent me free stuff. Uh -huh. uh, they sent me tons of it, uh, tons of wrong girl. Anyway, the capsules are really great. I think they're, mm. they're really, really great. I love them, and my son loves them. My wife loves them. We all love them. I mean, it's not, it's not the thing to like, all get all la di da. Oh, look at the fruity. Oh, I think I can have a bit of fruit plum. No, it's nothing like that. It's just, uh, it's a manly. Coffee hair on your chest espresso kind of type thing from a capsule, mm -hmm. from a compostable capsule. So mm -hmm. I bought some of their beans, sent some to you. Yes. And we didn't like them. <laughs> no, we didn't. I didn't like them. Like them. I actually, wait, no. So I tried them in uh, several different ways. I tried them as espresso. They do not work for me. They're, they're too dark, way too dark. They they work well as uh, reasonably well for cappuccino mm -hmm. because they're very dark mm -hmm. uh, and they make, but they still have a lot of um, um, very charred aftertaste, very strong. Yeah. Uh, I try them as pour over disaster. Do not do that. <laughs> do not do that as a pour <laughs> it over. Was a disaster. Oh, you're like was... punishing yourself? Yes, it was a disaster. <laughs> so I did, I, I, but I did try, I, you know, just for completion. Ah, okay. Can you so film yourself next time doing that? Huh? Can we? Can you film yourself about the facial expressions? No, 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 no. There was an, an, a very unpleasant face. It was something like, I know. That's yeah. why I want it filmed. That's no, it. No, the sucking no, the no, lemon no, face. No, but but I made it with mocha pot, and it's really, really, really good. Oh, sorry. Wait, wait. How many really? Many. <laughs> it's actually really good. Oh, okay, damn it, because I've been, I've almost used them all up. Uh, I've been make, making, um, I've been, okay, now you finish and I'll talk. What? No, sorry, I, I interrupted you. You finished. Oh, yeah, now. no, sorry, it's okay. Oh, that was it? Okay, well, why didn't you say, why didn't you, <laughs> why didn't you, you didn't say over. So, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> so then it's not over. I'm not done. <laughs> no, you didn't you say over. We, I don't know. But like last time, because it was the last thing, we were getting so bad with the, the latency. On this, uh, on this, on this new technology yeah. that failed, we, we had, had to, to say over. Say over. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't going to go. It wasn't going to come out well. Thank God no. it didn't work at all. Anyway, um, so I tried it with the mocha pot. So the recipe yeah. is uh, 17 grams for a four, for a, a four um, four person mocha pot. So 17 grams of coffee uh, ground for mocha pot. Mm -hmm. 225 to 230 uh, ml of water. ML, and then put it eh? in the fire. Put it on the stove. Eight, 
it's actually really nice. Very slowly, coming out really slowly. Um, and a little bit of sugar. I, I did put some, a little bit of sugar in that. Mm -hmm. That actually takes away the, the, the burnt aftertaste. So it's, that's very pleasant, like that. You know what I'm going to do? Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make cowboy coffee with it. It would work. Really I've well, got. I, think. I ordered on eBay a uh, a genuine. It came from a cowboy. Uh, cowboy coffee pot. Like they're, if you don't know what they're, they're quite large and they're mm -hmm. enamel, and you put them on a stove, put a lot of water in them, and then have you ever made cowboy coffee? No. So cowboys used to make coffee. Actually, a lot of times they used to carry green beans with them, and they used to fry the the beans, like roast the beans themselves. So mm -hmm. they would be pretty terribly roasted, I imagine. Yeah, I so. and, <laughs> or actually, really funny if you went back and you found out that actually, in history, you found out that actually cowboys were really sensitive people, and mm -hmm. uh, there were artisans and they used to roast coffee very carefully. Just, you know, they look at their rate of rise and all that kind of stuff in the pan. Mm -hmm. um, but I imagine that possibly isn't the case. Possibly more Probably true not, is, yeah. uh, is that they just you know stuck it on the fire and burnt them. Uh, their nose were crispy. So then they would take them <laughs> off and then they would grind them somehow, probably put them under the horses, smack the bottoms of the horse, horse would crush the things, they'd sweep up the, uh, the remains and throw them into a pot. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just adding a little bit of color to the, the whole thing. I don't know how they, how do they, they must have had a grinder, I guess. And then they would throw them into a pot mm -hmm. and uh, like it'd be these a big enamel or, or tin metal kind of mm -hmm. you know, pots and they put that hang it over the fire. And, um, but here, here's the thing, so you, they'd be it'd boil, so you get the water roiling, roiling is the word, it's a lovely word, roiling, mm -hmm. the roiling, you'd have it in there for several minutes, and then, because the, what you'd have, was, uh, all the coffee would be suspended inside of this, this water, the mm -hmm. secret, the secret, Max, to getting the coffee grounds to sink to the bottom is to put a dollop of cold water in over the top, and it drags all the coffee grounds down to the bottom. Uh, another secret is to put eggshells in there because eggshells have a lot of um, alkalinity. Mm -hmm. So if you if the if the beans are too acidic, you put some coffee, you put some eggshells in to make them a little bit more, and that would also help the things drop to the bottom. And then you'd carefully pour it off the top, and that would be your cowboy coffee. So uh, I might try some cowboy because this looks like a, a kind of bean. That's a, um, it's kind of a, a rough and ready, take me as you, as you see me kind of bean. Yeah, I think, I think I might... that would work. It's probably going to extract a lot from it, but the, the, for yeah. me, the mocha really worked. Yeah, I might have heart palpitations for a couple of days, but I'm willing to do that <laughs> as part of the, part of my commitment to this channel, Max. That's good. <laughs> I'll call you. So we'll do the podcast from the hospital next week, uh, where I'll be having my, my arrhythmia treated and, uh, <laughs> Okay. And I'll, I'll let you know how I get on. That's great. <laughs> Looking <laughs> forward to that. <laughs> hey, so listen, next week, what are we going to be doing? Which machine are we going to be doing next week? Mm, next week. You, um, choose. you choose a machine. I get to veto. I have veto rights. I'm like Russian. Da. Nyet. Say something. Nyet. Uh, 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 <laughs> yes. I Mention forgot. the machine. What? I forgot it. If you got, uh, you were going to say, uh, what well, we we got a we got a couple. We got the prof, uh, the Profitech. Profitech is one. I, you're not the, like no, no. You're thinking of the Lelit thing. The Lelit. 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 Yeah, there is Lelit. There is um, Profitech. I wanted to to throw to throw a, a spanner in your in your cogs and um, and suggest uh, La Spaziale. Oh, yeah, you did. You, you did suggest that speciality last week, and I think I consciously forgot on purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you going to bring that up again? Are you the speciality? I will bring it up again. All right. So um, I don't know what we will do. We'll decide, we'll decide at the end of this podcast because I want to look up just to see how bad an, a, an episode on the speciality could be. There's on, I think there's only two or three. Uh, so oh, so it's going to be a very short podcast. Yeah, there isn't very many. He's like, so Nick, I looked at these like, no, none of them are suitable. Or it's okay, what are we going to talk about? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be it. We can do La Spaziale and uh, Profitech. Yeah, we probably could mix the two up because to be honest with you, it's only one or two 
there's been, I think we need to labor the whole thing, go through every single item. I think there's only one or two proper texts that actually might make sense. Let's, mm -hmm. let's mix it up. Let's like a mixed martial arts, bang, bang, bosh, you know, wrestle and knockout with a mm -hmm. proper tech and a speciality next week. Yes. Awesome. Hey, fist bump, fist bump, fist bump. Do it. Ah! See you next week, Max. <laughs> See you.